this is just a uh, navigation with the page transitions and there is a link in the description for all the code for it so grab it and snag it man that's why i'm putting these up there i'll give you a uh, pretty good animated navigation with uh, an uh, animated uh, page transition and this is using uh, framer motion which is a react based animation library done by the guys over there at framer i believe it used to be pop motion but uh either way and I'm using Analink, which is GSAP, which is a plugin that you can get with Gatsby. This one here, I use um, a paint drip or drip paint. I forget what the hell they call it. You can also, in the transitions, stick an image on there. It's got a lot of stuff. You can check it out. But anyway, let me just show you what's going on here. Things I installed here, Frame Remotion, obviously, for Frame Remotion. GSAP, because you need that for Analink. I did React Icons, because I toss icons in here and style components to style locally. Other than that, everything else comes in a Gatsby starter. Now you can use the same code in um, Next.js or uh, create React app for that matter. I just opt for Gatsby because, hey, deliver static whenever you can. It's the fastest shit going. You might as well use it. And this here, Gatsby transition like also has to be uh, installed as a dependency. But if you, again, if you grab the code from the link, you could just run an NPM install in your editor and this will all come. And I'm just gonna do a quick walkthrough. So if you're new to this, you know what the hell's going on. Well, here, I created five pages. This being a home page, they're all the exact same. This could be a component unto itself because the only thing difference in here is the H1. So it's home, it's blog, it's index. I just didn't make it a component, didn't feel like it. Another thing, I brought in style components. Once you make your, your parent div a style div, you can now use normal CSS styling rules right here in this JavaScript file. And then we wrapped our each page with a layout. And so that's it. So we got our five pages wrapped in a layout. Imported, so imported React, built our arrow function, returned our JSX, right? Definition of a functional component. So if we go over and we take a look at layout, well, what is layout? Layout again, just important React. We got our arrow function and we're returning a menu, which is, well, that's our nav. And that's it, we're exporting it. So, well, let's take a look what's in menu, because obviously that's the only thing we're in. We're exporting here. So what is menu? Well, menu is React. I need frame or motion, so I'm important motion. And the hook they have, use cycle, so it works exactly like you state. Uh, I have a menu button, that should be self-explanatory, and I have the actual navigation. Then again, I imported style components, so I could put the styles down here, which is absolutely nothing, except for to make that parent div style to give it a position fix zero zero index four and make sure that the height is 100 vh so it covers the height of the viewport in here this is just a div returning a nav which in contains a div the navigation and a menu so let's take these one at a time if i go over to well let's start with the, the menu button obviously this is just an svg three lines one two three when closed, straight line across, straight line across, straight line across. As you can see, let me just kind of give myself a little space here. As you can see here, one, two, three. When it is open, this one will animate down. The top one animates down. The middle line opacity goes to zero, so that's gonna disappear. And the bottom one is going to animate up, creating our X that you see here. That's that. Now for navigation. There's a lot of noise on this page. Don't let it fool you. This is just an array of links. So you can, you know, you can ignore that. That act like that doesn't exist. These are just two variables containing two different animations. One name variance, one name variance two. What is this? What are we returning here? This is noise. These are just icons that I imported those three lines are these icons down here in a link I'm using instead of an anchor tag I'm using Analink, link which gives us automatic uh, well that's the page transition right there in that one line of code uh, I don't know it doesn't get much easier than Analink link used for Gatsby and the uh, menu CSS so what's going on here I am creating an ordered list that returns a list item and a link for each link in links I'm just mapping through it um, if that confuses you this is a list of links. That's link one, home, with its icon. This is link two, my services, with its icon. Uh, I'm putting that here. The path is right here. So that would that would insert this. The first time through, we'll make one of these for home. 
filling in the spaces, if you want to think of it that way. Link that path for the first one, home. Link that icon, it'll get this icon. Then it will go on and go through and give me the next one, which would be my services. That's what it's doing, and it will do that five times until I get the desired outcome. We delete that, but we don't have to do that because obviously we're using a map method to do that for us. So we only have to write it once. That's all that's going on here. Don't let motion, that's just noise. It's just a list item. And this is just an anchor tag that it is called Analink, which comes from Gatsby. And that will allow us in this case to use paint drip with a duration of 0.5. This is the path. It is two, it is not href because it is Analink. It's just like link. People from Next.js and Gatsby will understand that. All you're doing is adding Annie, and that's it. Now, if you didn't want the icon there, you could put text, and you'll get home. So, instead of these icons, what you could do, if you didn't feel like using icons, the text is there. You can just change this to text, and we'll pass that prop over, and now you'll just get the text. And that's it. And that's all just getting sent in, so... Oh, and as far as the Anon link, you can look it up on Gatsby's plugin. It will show you the different ones. You can also add in an image. So as you're going to the next page, instead of seeing that, you can see an image. You can slow it down. You can speed it up. I have it pretty quick right here as 0.5. All right, so now let's look at the inner workings of the actual um, transition for the nav. Well, what do we got? We got a motion. We got variances. You could consider these transitions equals variance too. Well, what's going to happen? Well, let's go back and take a look at the menu. We have a toggle, simple. It's using use cycle, which should look to you just like use state. Well, because it's doing the exact same thing here. And so we're going to toggle it is open, true or false. Now over here on the nav, the parent element, we have an initial false. If the animation is going to be, if it's open, you're going to use open. If not, it's going to be closed. Well, what's that? Well, here we are. Up here, it's telling us to use the variant sidecar. This is a variant just means uh, it's the animations that we're going to do. We can name them. So I could have different ones. I happen to, this one happens to be sidebar. On the other page, you'll see one called, uh, I forget what it's called, but we'll check it out in a second. So sidebar. All right. So if toggle is open, we're going to, going to get this animation here, which is just a clip path animation circle. That is, you can hardly see it because it's only 300 pixels wide, but this actually covers the whole page, almost like the transition does for the page transition. But obviously it gets clipped because we have the actual div is only 300 pixels long. How do I know that? Well, because I coded it and I named it class name background right here. And if I go over to my menu CSS, I can see I have a background here and it is in fact 300 pixels wide. Okay. Now, so this should make sense to you. So here we go, we're toggling it. And again, open or close, that's that. Now for navigation, there's a couple of animations there you might wanna check on. So let's see what's going on here. And the variant, this is variant two. So that's gonna be this animation here. There's my const, variant two, just like that says. And this one is variant. This one is just when it's open and closed. Again, this is working on a toggle because they are child elements of that parent nav it's just going to stagger the children coming in which are the list items right you I hope you guys understand that and I'm delaying each one of them to make sure that the first one finishes before the next one starts very close but there is there is a, a, a variation there and then in two which is going to be the actual list item what these are doing well when it's closed you're not going to see them they're going to be up well, 150 up so that when they do come on, they have to slide down. So we get that downward animation. And then our opacity, you're not going to see them when it's closed. Why? Well, we don't want to see them. And then so we want them to slide down and the opacity to go to one. All this other stuff here, this is just noise. This is to get your physics-based kind of stuff. You can mess with stuff like velocity, stiffness, all of that kind of stuff. You can go over to Frame or Motion. It's a fantastic library. So that's all that's going on here. And then we're wrapping that ankle like in this paint drip animation which is just a drop-in animation that's pre-made for you and in like is great so this here is great navigation so steal this throw it in your components folder you need a navigation where this works you just want a little drop down animated and a little simple page transition well there you have it keep it 
you guys don't watch this shit anyway. You just go right to the code. And um, so why do a three-hour video when I could just uh, put the code up front if you want it. Like, subscribe, grab the goddamn code. If not, if you want to, uh, and then we'll just do a walkthrough so you know what's going on. So you, you kind of know what it is you're using. And I hope that helps. Yeah, so if this is a good format, let me know in the comment section, guys. Take it easy, man. I hope you get a use out of it. Enjoy your day. Enjoy that quarantine.